Today, I want to cover the subject of prayer and angelic intervention. Angels are present throughout scriptures. As we read the book of Acts of the Apostles, we will realize quickly that the first church was so acquainted with angelic visitations. However, what are the governing principles in scripture? Why and how angels are released to intervene as we pray? This is important for us in the exercise of an accurate priesthood with understanding of the realm that we are engaging with. If you are interested, stay tuned. Welcome to the Berean tribe. Greetings, brethren. I trust you are doing well by the grace of God. Welcome on the Berean tribe. If this is your first time on this channel, I want to extend a very warm welcome to you. We do Bible study and we discuss biblical truth on this channel, just like the Bereans that were mentioned in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Consider hitting the subscribe button, the like button to expand the tribe. This will allow the channel to grow. For those that have been following us so far, thank you for your support. As mentioned earlier, today I will explore the subject of prayer and angelic intervention. Let's dive right into it. I will structure um, this study in two parts. I will first explore some cases of angelic intervention in the Bible, as well as the context for a background, followed, followed by a second part aiming at understanding the principles of angelic intervention that we can draw from Scripture. In the first part, I want to start with a few examples of Scripture that are often used as a foundation to pray for angelic intervention or give command to angels. First example, we'll find it in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. There it is written, But to which of the angels... Has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Are they, this is referring to the angels, are they not all ministering spirit sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? So this scripture is brought up in the context where the writer of the book of Hebrew is comparing the Son of God, the Lord Jesus, to angels, making it very clear that he is more excellent or exalted above the angels. Basically, this scripture is often understood as an establishing the basis for having authority to give instruction or command angel um, or release them. However, it is clear that this is rather establishing a divine order or an hierarchy in the kingdom of God with clear assignment of positions of task without necessarily implying that we can order or send angel around. We will dig deeper on this shortly. Stay with me. Second example, we find it in Daniel, in the, in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 to 13. There it is written, Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. This scripture is also well known and describes how a principality held for 21 days the angel Gabriel, who was sent to deliver a response to the prayer of Daniel. Now, this instance teaches us that there is an hierarchy in the spiritual realm. Even angel, if not of sufficient ranks, can be held by principalities. Here, angel Michael had to be deployed to release angel Gabriel because this is the domain of princes. A principality is a prince without a territory. And we know that Michael was the prince over Israel. You can check that in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. 
Now, we understand also from scripture that while Daniel was praying, he was unaware of all the events that the angel Gabriel is giving account of. He is being educated on why the response was delayed. We have the privilege to see the backstage, the background, what is going on behind the scene. That is what was going on behind the scene. One understanding from these scriptures is therefore that responses can be delayed because of resistance in the realm of the spirit, which is sometimes another background for prayers aiming at angelic forces to be released to deal with potential contention in the realm of the spirit. Now, I want to draw our attention to a few things here on the case of Daniel. First, what was Daniel doing? Daniel was interceding for his people. Daniel was involved in territorial intercession, praying according to prophetic calendar. He was praying to enforce the word of God concerning his people, his nation, Israel. We can see that in Daniel chapter 9, verse 2 to 3. There it is written. In the first year of, this, of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Israel, of Jerusalem. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make a request by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. Now, second, you will note that because of the contest here, which is again territorial, princes had to be involved, namely Michael and the principality or the forces of the enemy that have influence over that territory. So this has implication as well for jurisdictional authority. Third, we note that Daniel did not pray for angels to be released, but he persisted. He was consistently praying according to the will of God, pleading with God, so the key here is his persistence and alignment with prophetic word. So we will come back to this later and you will understand why this is important for us. Now let's look at our last example, um, the first church and angelic and division. We will read from Act chapter 12, verse 3 to 5, and we will jump to verse 7. There it is written, and because he, this is talking about Herod, so that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now, it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. Here as well, when we read the full chapter, we understand the church was well versed in angelic visitation. But the scripture did not say that they pray for angel to be released, but rather the emphasis was put on constant prayer, consistent prayer for Peter. As you can see, this looked like Daniel's case where he was in a long intercession. Further, we understand that Peter was instrumental in the building of the church and the enemy attempted to take out an important leader to kill the growth of the church, but constant prayer was made and he was released by angelic intervention. Having explored some of the cases of angelic intervention in the Bible, as well as the contest for a background, now let's turn to the second part of this study to understand the principles of angelic intervention that we can draw from scripture. <clears throat> the main principle is that angels respond or move according to the word of God. Let's establish that through scriptures. First scripture is found in Psalm 103, verse 20 to 21. There it is written, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word 
heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord all his hosts, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. So what do we see here? They do not operate outside of the word of God. They act to please God. So the only way they will intervene is to enforce the will, the word of God. Second scripture I want us to look at quickly is found in Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 14. There it is written, And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No. But as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my law say to his servant? This is in the context of Jericho. From the response of the angel, we understand that he serves the purposes of God. He obeys God's command. The guiding purpose of their intervention is, is what the Lord commands, for they are the army of the Lord. Number three. Finally, let's see what Jesus, the Lord Jesus, said himself in Matthew chapter 26, verse 52 to 53. But Jesus said to him, Put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot pray to my father, And he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels. How then could the scripture be fulfilled that he must happen this? This is the Lord speaking to Peter. Can you see here again the emphasis on the fact that they respond to the father? For Jesus said, it is the father that will send them. And he will not pray such prayer because it is the will of God for him to die for our salvation. So this is very important. Overall, we have learned that angels are released as we pray. Indeed, the Bible says that they encamp around those who fear the Lord. However, angels intervene to accomplish accomplish the will of of God, the word of God. In the, the Greek, the original word is angelos, meaning messenger of God. It is not necessary for us to pray and give command to angels to move. What we need is to pray consistently, constant prayers to the intent that, to the intent to enforce the will of God will naturally trigger the intervention and movements. We saw that with Daniel as he kept praying for 21 days to enforce prophetic agenda regarding Israel and with the church as they engage in constant prayer for the release of Peter. These two cases, interestingly, relate to intercession. Check a previous teaching we did on this channel on why we should all engage in intercession. If you have to pray explicitly for angelic release, the appropriate way would be to follow Jesus' example by asking the Father to send them, given that they only do his word. The commander of the angelic army was very clear when he responded to Joshua, the angel's side is the side of God. This is what I wanted to share with us today. Thank you for joining the tribe. If you are blessed by this channel, please remember to like, to subscribe, to comment, to share so that the channel can continue to grow and spread abroad. This is very important. Remain blessed until we meet again. Amen.